Okay. I am so glad to be here. I'm up in Sarasota, Florida, where it is sunshine and probably about 82 degrees right now. But since I'm from Brunswick, I know this feeling, this murky, grizzly feeling very well. I'm Liz Corson. I'm with EditNation.com. And I'm going to show you right now how to make $250. Who in here could use an extra 250 bucks? Everybody's got their hands. One lady back here doesn't care. All right, what if I told you that I was going to show you how to make 250 bucks not a month, not a week, not a day, not an hour. 250 bucks a minute. Who in here wouldn't like to make 250 bucks a minute? And I'm going to show you, oh look, everybody's got their hands raised. I would too. I would too. I'm going to grab my Honda Fit. I've got two cars. I have a Honda and I have a, a Porsche. I'm not going to draw, I'm not going to wrap the Honda in mean the Porsche, but I am going to wrap the Honda. So I know this guy and I said, give me a price to wrap my Honda. He came back with these proof copies. So I looked it over. I thought, no, 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 this is really not where I wanted to go, but I had to see it first. You know how that is? So I want to draw your attention to my tagline, editnation.com, because everyone need an editor. <laughs> now, is this a joke? Wouldn't it be funny if I drew a big black line through need and put needs and then drove around town? And I thought about it for a couple seconds, and I thought, no, because at this point, the buck stops here. And I need people to have confidence that I am a good editor, and I can spot a typo at 50 paces. So this was a $2,000 car wrap. How long would it have taken that person to review his work? I calculate about eight seconds. And my friends, that comes out to 250 bucks. One second for eight seconds. They lost my business by not taking that time and proofing my work. Because I'll tell you what, if you're going to proof anybody's work, it better be an editor. So what happens when you don't proof your work and you put your work online for a client, and there's a screaming typo on the first page. What kind of credibility does that give to your client? And how bad does it make you look? You can't trust someone. Think about it. Who doesn't spell? This gal is in Sarasota. She claims that she's a WordPress advisor. But if she can't spell the word advisor, how much confidence do I have in her ability? Would I pay her? to give me her wisdom if she can't spell the word advisor. It doesn't even put her stuff through spell check. Give me a break. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about excellence. I'm actually going to talk to you about perfection. Because this is a place where you can be perfect, just like the big guy upstairs. You can carve out perfection in your written words. And I want you all to take a deep breath and relax. Because I'm going to tell you a little bit of story about Serena Williams. We all know Serena Williams. She's been dominant in women's tennis for quite a while. Now, I want to ask you a question. When Serena Williams first stepped on the tennis court, do you think she cared about the width of the court, the height of the net, the length of the racket, or the size of the balls? I can practically guarantee you that she didn't give those things a second thought. She was there to play tennis. She was probably thinking about how to create a top spin law, but she didn't care about the fundamentals, the foundation that creates the game of tennis. Because Serena Williams knows that if you change one of those things, you could change the length, the height, the width, or the size, you might be playing a game, but you're not playing tennis. So what I'm going to do this morning, this afternoon, is I'm going to show you the top 12 things you need to know about good writing in American English. These are the foundation, foundational, fundamental things where there is no discussion. I'll answer any question you ask of me except one, and that is why. Because there is no answer to that question. But I will tell you that these are the rules of American English right here, right now, in 2018. And they will be the rules for the foreseeable future. So just breathe and relax and join me. Because when you leave this room, I guarantee I'm going to have you knowing these rules, and I'm going to have you thinking like an editor. Because we're going to find out three things. We're going to find out what 
to know. We're going to find out what you don't know. And we're going to find out, perhaps most important, what you're not sure about. That mushy middle ground when you're not sure. That's really what I want to find out. Because when you leave this room, I want you to leave this room with confidence. So let's take our first paper. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take two self-graded quizzes. There's nothing particularly strange or exotic in these rules. Everybody should know them. So we're going to take two quizzes. The one we're going to take first is mark quiz number one. It's blue. 21 sentence quiz. I want you to mark the correct sentences. I'm going to read the directions on what you go through. The only thing about this, everyone, is I'm going to give you four minutes. Because like I said, this is something you should know. Four, minute, four minutes does not translate into one minute per question. So if you get confused or flummoxed, just keep moving. Flow through it. I'd like to see if you can get through it, but if you can't, not to worry. We're going to go over the material in this quiz, and then we're going to take a second quiz. Because studies have shown that people retain new information 87% more if they're retested on new information immediately following the first time they learn it. So we're going to take a second quiz. And I'm going to blow your hair back because we don't have a lot of time. So four minutes starting right now. Let's take the blue quiz.
quiz because we're about to start talking about it. In five, four, three, two, one. All right. If you didn't get finished, it's no big deal. No big deal. You're not editors, most of you probably. So let's get started. Let's look at question number six, number one. It is. Yeah, there we go. This is the number one mistake. In fact, I'm not going to mention any names, but I went to a session this morning, and the fellow who was presenting got, got it wrong twice. <laughs> so here we go. This is the number one mistake everybody makes. It's versus it's. So you've got IT apostrophe S versus ITS. Anybody want to tell me what IT apostrophe S means? It is. It also means it has. It's a contraction. So that default now is ITS is the possessive of it. Boy, that trips me up all the time. It really does. But fortunately, I always do searches. If I'm doing a lot of content, I always do searches for both. Because sometimes, you know something? Spell check is not going to catch that. It might give you a blue line, but it ain't going to give you a red line because it's a real word. So make sure that you know in your heart, in your soul, in your bones, that this rule is very important and it's the number one mistake that people make in their content. ITS versus IT apostrophe S. So we look at number one. It's about social marketing, blogging, driving traffic, brand reputation. i got to tell you, these are all WordPress sentences. When I knew I was coming, I pulled them off WordPress sites. Tried to have all the identifying information expunged, but obviously I wasn't too careful because number two, Stonewall Publishing Consultants specializes in the rebranding of an author in its book. That doesn't really make sense, but they got its wrong because it should be his or her. But anyway, that's the mistake in that sense. So two down. 21 to go. Both those sentences are about ITS versus IT apostrophe S. Number three, in American English, the noun drives the bus, which means if you have a singular noun, you cannot use a plural verb form or a plural pronoun. So let's look at sentence number three. The noun here is site builder. Site builder, not site builders. Site builder is one. So you cannot say in their path. You have to say in his or her path. Or the easy workaround is site builders. Plural site builders. That's pretty easy. Is it commonly recognized though that there is a singular pronoun? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's 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 there's a move towards that in British English. In British English, it's actually okay. But the last time I looked, I'm standing in the United States. And if you want to connect with people quickly and efficiently through your writing, you need to write like them. So for example, if I came across a website and someone said that we're, we're wearing a gray sweater, and they spell gray, G-R-E-Y, I would think that the content might have been very well written in India, where they practice British English, but not in the States. So if you're trying to connect with Americans, definitely you need to use American English rules. If you are writing for Canadians, they speak British English. If you're writing for people in Singapore, British English. For the United States, it's American English. So you're right, and there is a movement toward, towards that, but that movement and that moment has not come. It has not come yet. Now, a wrinkle in this business about noun and pronoun agreement is found in Sentence four, I have the best and most skilled team of any hosting company. They know their craft. Team is what's called a collective noun. It refers to a group of people, but it is treated as a singular noun. You are my audience. An audience is, refers to a group of people, but you use a singular noun, singular pronoun, singular verb form. The workarounds are there if you want to find them, but you can never say the audience are. You cannot say the team knows their craft. A team is singular. No, no, no. But if it's a new sentence, does it still apply? Of course, because you're referring back to team. Absolutely. Now, if you said team members, you know, really it is. Just trust me on this. 17 mm -hmm. books, 10 of which are about American English punctuation and grammar. You can trust me on this. I'm sort of the swing of Williams of uh, punctuation and grammar. Okay, so, so yeah, team is singular. Now, if you're uncomfortable referring to a group of people as an it, and I personally am very uncomfortable referring to people as its, then the, the workaround is my team members. That's easy. Team members. 
This is the rule at this moment in time in American English. When the New York Times goes and changes its rule, I might consider changing my mind, but that moment has not come. Number five. What? Actually, you know something? I use what I call American academic style, which is a blend of Chicago, New York Times, and believe it or not, Princeton University style. So this is what people use in content, and this is what people use in novels. New York Times has newspaper style. Unless you're writing for a newspaper, you're not going to use that style. Chicago, Chicago's getting off the rails in some respects. I have a new Chicago book, and I've got under, uh, over my dead body written in the margins. And then Princeton has gotten a little bit lazy about Mount Down Pronoun just because there's just such a flood of sloppy writing coming at Princeton and the staff that they just sort of run up the white flag and said, no, we're not going to worry about that. I worry about that. So this is a blend. This is American academic style. And it is modern and it is current and what people need to use so you look smart. You want to look smart. That is the purpose of life, looking smart. Now, I have to say number five is the only sentence I'm going to talk about about commas. You're looking at a woman who can do a two-hour workshop about commas, the properties of commas. But obviously, we don't have two hours. I want to talk to you about this because almost all websites include information that's biographical in nature. If you ever say that you're from Boston, Massachusetts, you need to put a comma after Massachusetts unless it ends your sentence. So here, Shirley, who likes to drink wine, lives in Baltimore, Maryland with her husband and two dogs. She's got to have a comma after Maryland. It is non-negotiable. Yeah, that's one after Shirley, too, yeah. isn't she? Uh, no, because if that's not really parenthetical information. Shirley is necessary to the, to the sentence. So if you pulled Shirley out, no, you just say, and it's just any old wine exactly, and wine enthusiast. So, so that's a good, the, so the, the wine enthusiast is the introductory element, but there's not a second comma after Shirley. I wouldn't say Shirley, comma, a wine enthusiast, comma, lives in Baltimore, Maryland. You sure could. You sure could. That's another way to work around, but then it becomes, if the you know, wine enthusiast becomes the parenthetical information that can be taken out of the sentence completely, so you then you end up with Shirley lives in Baltimore, right. Baltimore, Maryland. Then you put the commas. Then you put a, the commas around the wine enthusiast because it's it's interesting but not necessary to the sentence. Not necessary to the sentence. Talk to me about commas. I'll tell you what. I can talk about them all day long. Okay. Watch your spacing. Let's look at sentences six and seven. These are both incorrect. So, so far, you might be seeing a trend. We have not seen a single solitary sentence that's correct. We have a great lineup of speakers. Lineup, unfortunately, is a verb phrase. A lineup, the noun, is one word. One word. And in number seven, Duncan, who's one of the founders of Angus Knight, set up Angus Knight. A set up is a noun. The verb phrase to set up is two words. So those are both mistakes. And those are both verb phrases I see used a lot. Line up, set up, those are verb phrases that people are using. You've got to watch your spaces on both of those. Here's, a, here's another sentence, number eight. Someone's looking to get my business because they have had testimonial on their website about WordPress hosting. Problem with this sentence is they put a hyphen in fully manage. Never put a hyphen after an L-Y adverb. Never. And unfortunately, it sounds so right, it sounds like it should be joined, but you never put an L-Y adverb after, excuse me, you never hyphenate an L-Y adverb. So this is incorrect because of that one mark of punctuation, because of that hyphen. But it's okay to have the they in a perfect fit. Yeah, I don't remember what the, the sentence prior to that is, so I have to go back and look. But for this, for our purposes, the problem is the, the hyphen. What was the question? Um, it, excuse me, I'm so sorry. The, the question was, they've been a perfect fit. So, so Gigi was asking about they. And because I don't have the preceding sentence in there to see if she was talking about a team or a company or whatever, we don't know whether they was used correctly. Is that, is that that's, yeah, that's Okay, thank you. Okay. Then, number nine, good Lord, everybody is off the rails.
emails about capitalization. I have a client who wants to capitalize the word visitors. He thinks he honors visitors by capitalizing the name, the word visitor to honor them and make them feel more important. All it does is make him look illiterate because you don't capitalize something unless it's a proper noun or part of a proper noun phrase. So why in the world would you want to say you are passionate with a capital P? Because passionate is absolutely not a proper noun. Cannot have that happen. But then on the flip side, people aren't capitalizing proper nouns. I have news for you. The word dumpster is a proper noun. And so is the word Google. Because even though that might be sometimes used as a verb nowadays, it is still a proper noun in this particular usage, a Google form. I would absolutely recommend that you capitalize appropriately. If you are in doubt, check an online dictionary to see if that word Xerox. I'm going to go Xerox. I'm going to blow my nose with Kleenex. Those are both proper nouns. They're trademark nouns. You have to be precise. So Google in this situation absolutely should have been capitalized. 11. So far we haven't done anything that's correct. Or are we going to? 11. Boy, I see this a lot. E.g. is the problem in this particular sentence. E.g. is always, 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 followed by a comma. No exceptions whatsoever. I.E. and E.g. are always followed by commas. Now, etc. You know something? We are so pressed for time, I'm not going to talk two minutes about the word etc. Because it's, it's interesting. The whole thing is interesting. So please put a comma after EG and ID. All right. Yes? A quick question. Can sure. you tell us the difference between IE and EG? Okay, sure. I, can, I absolutely can. EG means for example. Okay, there's a Latin phrase for it, which is escaping right, right now, but I always remember because E and example start with the same, same letter. So EG means for example. And IE means for in other words. So I in other words. This is how I keep them straight. Okay? So those are the, that's the difference. And they're not interchangeable. They're absolutely not. You need to know the difference between those two terms. Now 12, I love the sense, I'm going to read the whole thing. Creating quality content that engages the customer and is also keyword rich while portraying the branding of your company is key to having a successful website. Now, I've got to tell you, who's going to hire somebody who writes this? Can't spell having, can't spell successful, and you know something else, they didn't bother to put it in word because these are both red line. Red line, which means they cannot be published, and yet I popped them right off a WordPress developer's website. Would I hire that person? Going back to my original $250 a second question, I would not hire that person. If you can't spell, you're not getting my business. Oops, oh sorry. <laughs> but you know something after I've told you to use word, you can't trust word. You can't trust word. This is why the human brain will always be superior to the computer in so many respects. Because here we have two sentences with what are called homonyms. A homonym is a word pair, sometimes three actually, that are spelled differently, mean different things, but are pronounced the same. Okay, so if you're thinking your words and you're not paying attention to your spelling, you've got to be careful. Because the first, the first sentence, insure, I-N. Insure with an I-N is only used in the context of insurance. Car insurance, boat insurance, motorcycle insurance. You need insure, E-N, to insure something, to make certain of something. And then, just insurance well, no, that doesn't really work. If you think, about the, think about the sentence context, it's not... It's not uh, quite where it should be, and sure. And then peak. Who knows how to spell peak the way this needs to be spelled? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So this is another form of misspelling, and it's another example of somebody who wasn't paying attention to his or her writing because it sounds right, but it's not. All right. This is a little deep drop dive, the only deep dive I've allowed myself for my 40-minute Boot camp. Okay, I'm going to talk about quotation marks. I've seen them all over the place today, and I see them all over the place in, America, in, in WordPress sites. And this is America. We've already discussed this. So I'm going to look at 15, 16, and 15 and 16 for now. 
Okay, when you are in America and you are writing for Americans, you always meet with double quotes. And I will tell you what, there are no exceptions to this. None of these things actually I'm talking about today have exceptions. Or I wouldn't be talking about that. Double quotes. You always kick off with double quotes. So if you write something about one size fits all, you lead off with single quotes, you might be writing for a British audience, but you are incorrect for an American audience. So you've got to have double quotes. One size fits all. Now, the other rule that I want you all to look at is number 16. In America, in America, when you have quotation marks, they are always placed outside periods and commas. And I mean always, no exception. Always. Periods and commas, quotation marks are outside. Semicolons and colons, the quotation marks are inside. And question marks and exclamation points depend on the context of the sentence. But just don't worry about that right now. We're only talking about periods and commas. Quotation marks, double quotation marks, single quotation marks, all quotation marks outside periods and commas. Now, this is really interesting. Oh, yeah, I think I already said all this. Ah, you know, I do want to mention this really quick because Grammarly is so well known. Grammarly. Huh. Anyway, Grammarly is wrong on so many accounts, and here's one of them. Grammarly says that quotation marks always have to be in pairs. And if you look at that sort of superficially, you'll think, oh, yeah, of course they have to be always in pairs. No. No, no, no. I want you to pull off any novel you happen to have on your shelf, and I want you to notice that if you speak into, or you have a character, character who speaks into a second paragraph, there is no in quote, which means they're not in pairs. All right. I want to look at 17. This is something I made up. I'm going to take all credit for this. I'm going to talk to you about the rule of pi, because this tells you when you need to use quotation marks and when you use, need to use italics. Okay, what do you think about a pie? I want you to imagine your favorite flavor might happen to be key lime pie. Big old pie. You can slice a pie. All right. When you have, it used to be in my time, a record album, okay, but the newspaper, a magazine, if you can divide the pie, a pie, the pie itself is put into italics. So the New York Times is in italics. But the pieces of the pie are in quotation marks. So the article in the New York Times is in quotation marks, but the New York Times is in italics. The article in the magazine, the song title, those pieces, those divisions of the pie are in quotation marks, but the record album title is in italics. So when you say that you invented the internet, it doesn't really sound like I have a lot of faith in you because how I invented the internet should be in italics. Italics. Now, 18, I want to talk about because I made a mistake on this, and somehow the hyphen between 8 and 8 did not show up. But there are two correct ways to show time in American English. The first one is to use lowercase, no spacing, but periods. You always have your 330 space A period M period. Or I don't like to use top of the hour colon zero zero. I think that clutters my prose. So I'll just say four space lowercase p period lowercase m period. That's how you can do that one style. The other way is to do uppercase with no period. But there's always going to be a space between your number and your am or pm. You see that mistake a lot. We haven't found anything correct yet. 19. Here's some sloppy writing. This led to Liam transition from a career. Well, gosh, it looks like a missing word there. Uh, this led to Liam's transition from a career, or maybe so, Liam transitioning from a career, but Liam did not tr tr transition from a career. No, that's absolutely wrong. And a careful edit, a careful check, double check, would have caught that. And number 20. Our marketing programs are, what? Maybe R, A, R, E, but they're not our custom tailored. So, so far we've gone through 20 questions. We have not found one that is correct. But this is a 21 question quiz. Where's our 21st question? Where's our 21st sentence? Where is it? Where is the other? What? 
There we go. That's right. Those missing words, gosh darn it, they are a you know what to find. They're so hard to see because they're not there. Goodness gracious. So we've gone through 21 sentences and none of these were correct. None of them. But I told you, I promised you that I would have you thinking like an editor. So let's go ahead and think like an editor. One thing I see is I look at this as a piece, as a piece of writing. I see one sentence in here that's bolded. And one of the big bugaboos of writing, you've got to be correct, you've got to be compelling, and you've got to be consistent. So if this is of a piece, I would expect that all the words are going to be in the same font, in the same type of font, and if I saw a bold like this, I'd wonder why. I'd wonder why. So I would consider that, as an editor, a mistake. But there's something else that's a little more profound, maybe a little more subtle, that I want to see if anybody caught. Did anybody catch something else you want to tell me about? There's something really stinky in this prose, and if everybody says uncle, I'll tell you what it is. Because when you see it, I guarantee you will not unsee it. This is the joy of being an editor, because once you see this stuff, it just comes up and slaps you upside the head. Is it the headline? No, no, I'm sorry. That's, if there's anything up in the headline, that's my doing. It's not that. I'm bothered by the second sentences going all the way under the numbers. Yeah. Oh, that bothers me too, but you know something? Ladies, that's not it. That's just me. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a hint. 15, 16, and 17 is where these mistakes are found. Okay, so everybody says uncle. We got three different kinds of quotation marks in this. We got directional, two different kinds of directional, and then we got one kind of non-directional. Ouch! That is not good writing. You must have a style. You must establish a beachhead before you invade France. And you must say that our style is going to be directional or non-directional quotation marks. You have to establish a style saying, this is our font. This is the way we're going to tell time. And we're going to do it throughout, throughout. And maybe it will change from client to client. Maybe one client will have a preference. But you must establish style. You really must. Otherwise, your writing is going to be all over the place. Does anybody in here work for a company that has a style guide? We've got one man. We've got two ladies back here. We've got another gentleman. And, and, and we've got somebody who's I'm not like, sure. I'm kind of pregnant. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a dangerous place to be. That's a dangerous place to be. So I would suggest that you all consider telling the powers that be at your company that your company needs to establish a style guide. A style that is imposed on not only your material for your own website, but for everybody else's. Correct, consistent, compelling. The consistency is where you find your excellence. So here's a little bit closer to my Honda Fit. If anybody else has a Honda Fit in this room, I pity you because it is just like driving a tin can with a sewing machine engine. I've never driven in such a bad car. But pretty soon I'm going to be driving around so sporty in Sarasota, looking like an editor, and it's all going to be spelled correctly. Believe it. Believe it. Serena Williams, to circle back to her. Serena Williams does not care about anything to do with the foundation of tennis. I would tell you frankly that things do change, though. There's always going to be a frothy leading edge to tennis and to our language. For example, when I began to play tennis back in the 60s, we all had to wear white. Now, I didn't say we had to be white, I said we had to wear white. Now, obviously, things have changed in tennis. A lot of things have changed in tennis, and a lot of things have changed in the English language since I was playing tennis. And I will tell you that what we've done today, what we've looked at today, and even though we only got through one quiz, I was a little ambitious. Even though we only got to one quiz, what I told you are principles that you can take to the bank. You can have a fist fight with your boss if you go back to the office and he or she tells you that this is not the way to go. Because this is where excellence lies. This is where professionalism lies. And I guarantee you, if you impose style on your content, you will look professional and you will 
make money, perhaps even $250 a second. Thank you all for being here.